Hello, this is Sea Hedgehog, and you're here again on my channel, Adjust in Sober Earnest. And I thought, since I was getting close to the end, or close to a, like, I don't know, around 20 minutes for the other video, I figured I would stop and start another one. So this is birthday fabric. More fabric. I'm a fabric hoarder. It's a problem. Um, so this is from my mom. Um... I kind of went crazy and then my face so the fabric store that she got me a coupon from had or not a coupon a gift card for had a sale so everything was 20% off and I was like ooh, I'll use my gift card and get extra fabric so um, I guess I'll show hold on the only thing that is complete from my birthday fabric was an outfit that I got for my sister um, and Please forgive the top stitching around the neckline. I don't, I don't know. I cut a lining for the dress and it kept showing on the top. And I know that top stitching around the neck neckline is a big no-no, but I couldn't find another way to fix it. So that's what we have. So I made her like a Fortuni-esque gown. Um, it doesn't have the length of a Fortuni um, because that's not really walkable. Um, and it's not joined together in the same way down the side seams, but I did find a Fortuni gown with sleeves similar to this. So the, and they all, they, I don't know, a lot of them have boat necks. So the silhouette should be similar. Um, but this is made with a permanent pleat fabric. Um, I saw her eyeing some of my permanent pleat fabric that I got for Christmas. Um, the fabric that I made the pants out of was one of them. And this is her favorite color. So I made her a dress. Eh. So there's the bottom. Here's the top. The cool thing about it is I didn't want to use beads up the side. So like the side, the side seams are just sewn. Um, but I did want to do something like the Fortuni dresses on the sleeves. Um, so I decided to use these little triangle, um, whatever, to give more of a Greek look. Um, my sister... The only place she's ever traveled out of the country has been to Greece and Italy. So I figured that I'd give her a dress with that aesthetic, um, somewhat. So that's what we ended up with. It's got, I don't want to try it on because it's not mine. Um, but it's got like, I don't know, like a nice like flower petal -y sleeves. Um, a big thing with her is she doesn't like when things are baggy. So continuing these little dime or these little, yeah, triangle shaped beads down the sleeves so that they hug to her arm was kind of necessary. Um, I remember when I was younger, she would have these episodes where she'd just throw an absolute fit if she was wearing something she didn't want to wipe. So she didn't like buttons down her front, she didn't like lace at the top of her socks or collars on her shirts or, did I say tights? And then she didn't like, um, like bagginess in like her pant legs or her sleeves. Um, so I just remember like being stuck in the car with her after, I don't know, some family celebration where you have to get dressed up and she was just like yelling and she just like ripped her shirt off and like tore the side. She was like, no! <laughs> so yeah, clearly they made an impact and that's why the, the pattern has been somewhat modified. So I'm gonna hang this up and then I'll come back with the things that I have not sewn on um, for my birthday haul. <laughs> My cat has already sat down on the fabric. Um, so the first combination um, are these two. They don't quite exactly match, but I do think they coordinate. Um, so this one is really interesting. It was fairly inexpensive. Um, well, it was inexpensive if it were silk, because it's not. Um, it's made to look like a silk, but it's actually a cotton. Um, it's supposed, it's from their like vegan line, um, cause typically, um, if your clothing is made out of silk and it's not like Tussa silk or raw silk, um, in order, I, I guess, have you ever, if you've ever seen, um, Dupioni that has those slubs of silk in it, those little bumps in the fabric, um, those little bumps are caused, and I don't know in, in all Dupioni if that's what it's caused by, but it can be caused by the moths hatching out, the silk moths hatching out of the cocoon and breaking free. It like tangles the silk and it can't be totally um, unwoven. 
but if you find silks that don't have slubs in them and probably the ones with slubs also do it this way because it's probably cheaper but it means that the caterpillars inside of the cocoons have been killed um because so that they don't break free and cause that little like tangly bit that results in an imperfection in the fiber um so if you care a lot about that you wouldn't want to buy things that are from silk because you can't necessarily verify that the moths have been allowed to escape so that is why it's considered vegan <laughs> but i'm like yeah so um, but just in case that keyword helps you find whatever this fabric is, I'll try to include it below. Or it, it's some like synthetic cotton, like recycled cotton fiber. <laughs> it has a, a snazzy branded name for marketing purposes. Cupro. I knew it had a weird name. C-U-P-R-O. Cupro. But it's cotton. This is not vegan. They had like a vegan brocade um, to pair with it that was in a similar colorway. Um, this is, uh, if I'd hazard a guess, it is entirely polyester. So no animals were harmed, but probably not the most, um, environmental, like, factory methods. So this is, and I, I think I actually like the backside better, but this is a, um, a metallic brocade. You can tell better from this side, though. See what's shiny? This is a metallic brocade with like a vaguely cheetah print. <laughs> I'm not really a cheetah print person, but I feel like this is abstract enough that um, I can make something out of. So this Cupro is either going with this, or if you look back in my Christmas haul video, um, I have a, what do I want to call it? What is it? A tweed that is also in this similar colorway that could also go with it. The tweed is a little bit more gold, so it may actually go with it better. Um, I don't know what I'm making from this. Like, I know that this is going to be a shirt. One of my pet peeves is silk shirts because silk does not survive very well um, with, inevitably, uh, in order to keep the sheen that's on the surface of the silk, you have to dry clean it. And unfortunately, dry cleaning doesn't really clean the fabric. So what happens, I find, with silk in particular, is if you have it dry cleaned and you've worn it and you don't wear like sweat protectors or whatever, but inevitably I lose my silk shirts far faster than I lose my cotton or linen shirt. So I'm hoping that the cotton will be better. In general, I like cotton better than silk. Wool better than cotton, cotton better than silk. Linen, I have an interesting relationship with. This was a tangent, we're just gonna move on. So I don't know, I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe I'll do like a pair of pants, like a pair of dress pants. I think I've said in another video, I'm not really a skirt person. So although this like calls to be made into a skirt, I probably wouldn't wear it. So that's probably a bad idea. Um, and then I also got this pair. Um, I got more of my favorite, I think this is like a flanneled um, selvage shirting. It's got that red line and it's got that clean selvage um and then this is the heaviest um the heaviest denim i've ever been able to find in a store i generally buy online um but this is incredible it's just like super heavy i don't think it's quite as heavy as my 20 ounce that i found online once um but it's pretty heavy it's also my 20 ounce took like three washes before it was wearable, five washes before it was comfortable, and has now reached, has now just started to reach the like flannel stage where it feel like the surface of the jean, the surface of the denim has become soft and uh, comfortable. Like, like I enjoy putting it on. This one seems to have already reached, has already been like flanneled somewhat on the inside. So it will probably be more comfortable when I put it on immediately. I don't know. Um, I'm tempted to make pants out of this, but I've also been trying to make a jacket that I can put all of those crazy um, patches on that I showed like, I don't know, a couple a couple sewing videos ago um, that are like alternative Girl Scout patches. Um, and I feel like it needs to be like a casual jacket, so maybe like a denim, so maybe I'll use that to make this. I was eyeing this um, plaid lining fabric um, that was discounted at my fabric store. 
Um, so I might go back and get that and make that the inside of the jacket if I do end up making it. The one caveat is that I already do have a denim jacket that has a pretty heavy lining to it so I don't know if I'd want to make a denim jacket without a lining the problem with that is that then I could only wear it in the like summer for air conditioning or in the spring or the fall but I can't put the patches on that denim jacket because that denim jacket is made to look like a 1950s maybe Levi's um, like Pendleton collab um, so it has Pendleton wool on the inside and then is cut like a like 1950s ish Levi's jacket. So I like tried to make it, it's not t terribly historically accurate, but it's more historically accurate than adding those alternative scouting patches on it would make it. So I ideally I would like to leave that as it is. Um, lost my train of thought. What am I doing? Okay. And then I have the last thing I got is this fabric. It is, I think it's a wool mostly. I don't know what else. Oh, cotton and wool. Um, what I liked about it is it's, I, I don't know if it's, I think it's considered a double knit. Um, so I'll hold it up so you can see. So this is what it looks like on one side. It's a very denim -y color and pattern. And then on the back side, it's navy and like a light blue. It's probably, it's the dark blue mixed with white. So it has like, it has denim like warp and weft where the um, weft is white. Um, and it's this really spongy, heavy, not very dense fabric. Um, so I, li I like it a lot. I don't know what I'm gonna make out of it. It's kind of out of season, so I might put it away. It's just the 20% off plus somebody else was paying for it persuaded me to get it um, because I probably wouldn't have the opportunity to get it any other time. So I'll probably sit on it. It'll go into my fabric hoard. Um, I think I'm going to end this video. Bye.